Well, again, good morning, and welcome to worship on this absolutely beautiful first Sunday of March. A special welcome also to visitors. We're glad you've joined us today, and also welcome to all of you joining us on Facebook this morning. So some announcements for this upcoming week. Tomorrow we have a mystery dinner from noon until 2 o'clock. That's for grades 2 through 6, and you can sign up on the bulletin board or letting Lindsay know. And with that, I think you also need some youth and youth volunteer? Yep, some more volunteers, so let Lindsay know if you can help. Um, due to spring break, we do not have linked or confirmation on Wednesday. We do, however, have our regular Wednesday Lenten worship at 6.30 and a meal beforehand that begins at around 5 and goes until worship. On Thursday, we have Theology on Tap, and that is from 6.30 to 8, and that is out at Shell's. Um, Please come to that, bring a friend. Glad to have all of you there for some conversation and learning. Our Savior's is a polling place, and so that means tomorrow they'll be setting up our social hall for polling, and then on Tuesday the social hall will be busy. Obviously we're still open in the office and we're still here, but just so you know, if you come here and there's a bunch of cars, we are a polling place. In our prayers today, we pray for all of those on our list, and we also pray for the family of Renee Knops, whose funeral was here on Friday, and we thank Rosalie, her sister, for the flowers here uh, from that funeral. Those are the announcements we have, so please stand as we begin worship with our gathering hymn, In the Cross of Christ I Glory. We continue with the confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who writes the law on our hearts, who draws all people together through Jesus. Amen. Held in God's mercy, let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. We take a moment for reflection. Holy God, we confess that we are caught in snares of sin and cannot break free. We hoard resources while our neighbors are hungry and cold. We speak in ways that silence others. We are silent when we should speak up. We keep score in our hearts. We let hurts grow into hatred. For all these things and for sins only you know, Forgive us, Lord. Amen. Here is a flood of grace. Out of love for the whole world, God draws near to us, breaks every snare of sin, washes away our wrongs, and restores the promise of life through Jesus Christ. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
Let us pray together. Holy God, through your Son, you have called us to live faithfully and act courageously. Keep us steadfast in your covenant of grace and teach us the wisdom that comes only through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. This, uh, oh, is this on? Yes. Okay, there we go. Uh, this hymn comes out of the new hymnal, All Creation Sings, uh, and I do have the words up there so you can follow along. This church be like a tree behind your house, there in your garden. Meeting place for joy and feast and simple prayer beneath its branches. With its roots in earth so fertile and its arms raised high to heaven. May this church bear fruits of justice, acts of loving and compassion. Tree ever growing by living water, running eternal, flowing from God. Like a tree there in the street or in the plaza For the birds a nesting branch For passers-by a welcome shelter May it stand as if it's watching Near my house around the corner Waiting for this weary pilgrim With its arms wide to embrace me ever growing by living water running eternal flowing from God Like a tree, O oh God, that thrives where you have planted. May it stand to show the way, your way of loving and self giving, offering shade and fruit for sharing, giving of its wood for burning. May this living church that names you be a tree of life eternal. Ever growing by living water, running eternal, flowing from God, tree 
ever growing my living water running eternal flowing from God We'll now continue with our reading. The first reading for today is from Exodus chapter 20. God spoke all these words. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an idol, whether in the form of anything that is in heaven above, or that is on the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or worship them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing children for the iniquity of parents to the third and the fourth generation of those who reject me, but showing steadfast love to the thousandth generation of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not make wrongful use of the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not acquit anyone who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. You shall not do any work, you, your son or your daughter, your male or female slave, your livestock, or the alien resident in your towns. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, but rested the seventh day. Therefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and consecrated it. Honor your father and your mother, so that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, or male or female slave, or ox, or donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. Word of God, word of life. Be God. The second reading for today is Psalm 19. We will read the psalm responsively. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the sky proclaims its maker's handiwork. One day tells its tale to another, and one night imparts knowledge to another. Although they have no words or language, and their voices are not heard, their sound has gone out into all lands, and their message to the ends of the world, where God has pitched a tent for the sun. It comes forth like a bridegroom out of his chamber, it rejoices like a champion to run its course. It's forth from the utmost edge of the heavens and runs about to the end of it again. Nothing is hidden from its burning heat. The teaching of the Lord is perfect and revives the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure and gives wisdom to the simple. The statutes of the Lord are just and rejoice the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear and gives light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean and endures forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. Be desired are they than gold, much more than fine gold, sweeter far than honey, than honey in the comb. By them also is your servant enlightened, and in keeping them there is great reward. 
who can detect one's own offenses. Cleanse me from my secret faults. Above all, keep your servant from presumptuous sins. Let them not get dominion over me. Then shall I be whole and sound and innocent of a great offense. The words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Please stand as you are able for the gospel acclamation. The Holy Gospel according to John chapter 2. Glory to you, O Lord. The Passover of the Jews was near, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple, he found people selling cattle, sheep, and doves, and the money changers seated at their tables. Making a whip of cords, he drove all of them out of the temple, both the sheep and the cattle, and he poured, uh, he poured also the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. He told those who were selling the doves, take these things out of here. Stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples remembered that it was written, zeal for your house, uh, zeal for your house will consume me. The Jews then said to him, what sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered them, destroy this temple. And in three days I will raise it up. The Jews then said, This temple has been under construction for 40, uh, 46 years, and you will raise it up in three days. But he was speaking of the temple of his body. After he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they believed the scripture and the word that Jesus had spoken. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated, and I'd like to invite the kids up for a children's sermon. Anybody coming up? You want to come up? How's it going? Pretty good? It's pretty nice outside, right? Isn't that good? Yeah. It's beautiful outside. Yeah, you can sit right there. That's perfect. So, I have this book. Do you guys know what this book is? Ooh, that's pretty close. The Small Catechism. That's not really a word we use very much, right? But in this, there are all these important teachings. Like, we've got the Lord's Prayer and the Apostles' Creed and also the Ten Commandments, which we heard this morning, right? Yeah, we heard that in our first reading, and we've got ten rules we have to follow. So we've got, you shall have no other gods, you shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy, honor your father and your mother, you shall not kill, you shall not commit adultery, Uh, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness against your neighbor, you shall not covet your neighbor's house, and this is the best one. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife or his manservant or his maidservant or his cattle or anything that is your neighbor's. So we have ten commandments. But here's the thing. Those commandments, some of them are about God and some of them are about people, right? We have to honor God, not use God's name in vain, remember the Sabbath day. So we've got three about God and we've got seven about how we live with people because that's really important is how we care for the people around us and how we, how we work with them, right? So we have this law to help us live with our family and friends and neighbors and classmates and teachers and all of these people. And sometimes it's a little tough, but we keep coming back to remember these so that we can do better next time, right? Yeah. Well, yeah. Ooh, again, such good questions. Why are the three, why are the three commandments 
about God and that, seven about people. Shouldn't that is the perfect about? question. We have three about God and seven about people. Well, because if we help people, we help God. If we care for those around us. Yeah. You have one money. Congratulations. That's pretty nice. We can talk about that later, but that is exactly the right question to ask. So let's say a word of prayer. Repeat after me. Holy God, thank you for your law. Help us to listen to you, to love you, and to love others. Amen. Thanks for coming up, you guys. You can head on back. I do. I have different clothes on. I can't play my guitar with my alb on, so I didn't wear my, my alb for that. Now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. I want you to think for a minute about where you feel most welcome. I'm sure we all have an idea of where we would feel welcome. Maybe it's at our home. Some of us might say here at church. Some of us might even say like at work or at school. But I want you to think about a place that you don't have ownership over or control over, that you, that you are a stranger to where you have felt welcome. That's a little bit more difficult, right? It's a little bit more difficult to think about because there aren't a lot of places where we f instantly feel at home, right? Like, if we were thinking about places where we feel at home, anywhere where I'm around family, that's a good one, but that's because they know me and they still have to love me, no matter how weird I am. Or like with my friends, a kind of found family along the way, people who I have gotten to know and they've gotten to know me over time. But that took a while, right? It takes a while to trust in that way. There are plenty of places where we feel welcome, but not always when we are new to them. Like, as a Lutheran pastor, if I walk into a church, I basically know my way around. I've spent enough time in churches, I know. But there are plenty of churches where I do not feel welcomed. And that is tough. But I think that welcome is an important part of the church as a whole. Being welcome is a part of what the church should do. So I want you to think back to the gospel reading for today. That beautiful passage about Jesus showing love and welcome. And he does that by throwing tables around and making a whip and trying to hit people with it. Does that feel super welcoming? Yeah? No, no, it doesn't. That feels terrifying, right? But I want to say Jesus is actually showing welcome in this. See, in those days... The temple was a place of forgiveness. It was a place where you could come and be in the presence of God and where God would offer love and forgiveness and show you that you are a beloved child of God. But you had to do something for that in those days. You had to offer a sacrifice. And keep in mind, most of the people living at this time didn't have jobs. They weren't working in the way that we think of it. Most of them were subsistence farmers. They grew enough food for them and their family to eat. And they weren't earning a lot of money. They were just surviving. So, you live 200 miles away from Jerusalem, and now you have to walk with an animal from your own house all the way to Jerusalem so that you can make an offering and receive forgiveness. That's not an easy thing to do. So it was easier for people to just say, 
I'll go and I'll buy something there. You know, one of these doves is worth like three days' labor. I, I can do that. I can make that work. So then you get there, you get to the temple, you walk inside, and you see the chaos of animals running around. You hear people calling out their prices and saying, I'll give you a good rate, I'll give you a good rate. So rather than paying uh, three days wages, you pay 18 days wages. I don't know if that's a great rate. And Jesus walks in and sees people making money off of God's forgiveness. This reminds me of Martin Luther. Luther had a huge issue with indulgences in the church. Indulgences were a way for people to buy forgiveness for others. You'd pay some money, you'd receive a piece of paper, and it would say that this cuts this many years off of purgatory for one of your loved ones. That's kind of how this was working too. And Jesus was saying, get out. This is not what the temple is for. It is not a place for you to make money. It is a place for people to find the love of God. And if you are getting in the way of that, we'll leave it there. Jesus shows how he feels about that. So he is showing welcome not to the money changers, but to the people who can't afford to bring their sacrifice, the people who can't, who can't pay for it because God's love is not for sale. So this passage, I think, is really interesting. I think it's a little funny, but it's also terrifying because it makes me wonder are there things that I have done in which Jesus needs to flip some tables? That is a scary proposition to ask. Are there things that we as a church, that we as the ELCA have done where Jesus would need to flip some tables? There are people from other denominations who would say, absolutely, yes. I don't know. But the fact that I don't know makes me worry. Because it's not just about money. It's about how we live our lives. Like I was saying with the kids, three commandments about loving God and seven about how we deal with the people around us. God makes it clear where God's priorities lie. It's with the people. Philip Yancey is a, uh, a pastor, and he writes some studies, uh, some of which we've used at this church. But Philip Yancey was talking to one of his friends uh, who told him this story. His friend suffers from alcoholism. And so he said, When I'm late to church, people turn around and stare at me with frowns of disapproval. I get the clear message that I'm not as responsible as they are. When I'm late to Alcoholics Anonymous, the meeting comes to a halt, and everyone jumps up to hug and welcome me. They realize that my lateness may be a sign that I almost didn't make it. When I show up, it proves that my desperate need for them won out over my desperate need for alcohol. Where do we feel welcome? I hope we feel welcome here. I hope we do. But we also have to ask the question, do people walking in off the streets feel welcome here too? Do they feel the same love that we feel here? Because that is on us. It is difficult for us 
to live up to what God deserves from us. But that's why I love that hymn that I played. Because it tells us what the church should be. It tells us with a very simple metaphor. If the church is like a tree, it provides shade for those who are being beaten down upon by the sun. If the church is like a tree, it provides food for those who are hungry. It stands as a sign in the middle of the street. And in that last verse, we get the line, giving up its wood for burning. We, the church, cannot make idols for ourselves of the church. We have to know that God expects so much from us and that we have a responsibility to be the church around this world, to serve with everything that we are. That's an impossible thing to do, but we have the love and forgiveness of Christ, and we also have a Christ who is willing to do what it takes to make a whip, to flip some tables. We have a God who is willing to tell us when we are doing wrong and to encourage us to do what is needed. Because I promise you that God will tear down injustice and hate and God will build up love and peace. Let's pray. Holy God, this world is filled with so much confusion and pain and you come into this world telling us what's wrong. Help us to see where we are complicit. Help us to know where we have made others feel unwelcome or unworthy. Help us to see those places where we fall short of what you need from us. And remind us that we are your beloved children and that you will give us more chances than we deserve. Through your grace and mercy, we will continue to do your work. Be with us and guide us as we continue to learn your will. All this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I invite you to stand as you're able and we'll join in our hymn of the day, The Canticle of the Turning.
With the whole church, let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Relying on the promises of God, we pray boldly for the church, the world, and all in need. There is no God before you. Strengthen the faith of your church that your people place their trust in nothing beside you. Make us a servant church that continues to follow where your commandments lead, loving you above all and loving our neighbors as ourselves. Lord, in your mercy, your foolishness, O God, is wiser than human wisdom. Fill leaders with the foolishness of your peace and mercy. Work through legislators, judicial systems, and systems of law enforcement to protect the well-being and freedom of all. Work through us and give us the gift of wisdom that helps us build communities where all are safe and valued and where your creation is stewarded for those who will come after us. Lord, in your mercy. Your weakness, O oh God, is stronger than human strength. Give Sabbath rest to all who labor. Protect those who are vulnerable and give courage to all who are suffering especially Rich, Audrey, Russ, Eloise, Dixie, Marge, Brenda, Brad, Marilyn, Sharon, Ken, Lyndon, Mavis, Dave, Tracy, George, Carol, Vern, Paul, Pam, Sharon, Gabrielle, Joanne, Marge, and those we name out loud or in the silence of our hearts. Comfort all who grieve, especially the family of Renee Knops. Lord, in your mercy, you call us, O oh God, to proclaim Christ crucified. Give clarity to this congregation and our leaders so that we might follow Christ beyond our own habits and comfort. Help this congregation to live out our callings with great expectations, knowing that all things are possible with you. Sustain any in this community undergoing life transitions. Lord, in your mercy, we entrust ourselves and all our prayers to you, O faithful God, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you. Let us share a word or sign of God's peace with one another.
Let us pray. Jesus, you are the bread of life and the host of this meal. Bless these gifts that we have gathered, that all people may know your goodness. Feed us not only with this holy food, but with hunger for justice and peace. We pray this in your name. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We remember on the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, giving it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, Christ took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom, and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. This morning, communion will be served around the altar. Our ushers will release you, and you can come forward uh, standing along this tan line. When you come forward, you'll receive a piece of bread or a gluten-free wafer upon request. Once you've eaten that, you'll receive a glass of wine or of grape juice. If you'd prefer grape juice, please put up your index finger so our deacon can know that's your choice. And once you've finished with that, we have baskets on either side where you can place your empty cups. This is the meal that Christ has prepared for us. This is the welcome that Christ has shown us. All are welcome. All are welcome. Come, eat, and be filled.
Holy God has fed us with the bread of life and the cup of salvation. May it strengthen us for all of our days to come and keep us growing in the joy of the Lord. Amen. I invite you to stand as you are able as we receive our benediction. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you with grace and mercy. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We'll join in our sending hymn.
Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to you.